Hey you guys, it's Delon. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel um, or being here for the first time if you are. As you can tell from the title, this is going to be a story time. Even though it is a very serious and deep story time, it is a story time nonetheless. So I would say grab something to drink, grab a snack, something like that because I already know this is going to be a lengthy video. Um, let me start by saying, I knew that eventually I would create this video. I didn't know when I was going to, but I knew that the Lord was going to release me to create this video in the, in the future. Okay, so I already have um, spoken about this story to, you know, people that are in my personal life all of that but it's also in my book but not in the detail that i'm going to release on this video it's not in it's not in my book it's, it doesn't go into as much detail as i'm about to release um the reason that i'm doing it now is because one of my friends reached out to me and was just telling me that the lord had allowed her spirit to discern that she was a part of a cult and that she um was involved with this church that basically practiced the same things that I'm going to talk about today. And so when she sent me that and how shook she was and she just sent me all these voice mem memos and messages about all the things that were happening and I resonated so heavily and I had felt that anyway when I went to go visit um, I didn't visit the church but I went to go visit this function that they were having and the people that were there they were all the members of the group all the members of the church and I just I recognized it I saw it then and so when she told me about it I was like okay this is my sign this is my sign that number one there are so many people in the body of Christ who are dealing with this and don't know that they're dealing with this don't know that they are being literally deceived by this and then um just to expose the enemy at the end of the day, at the end of the day, to expose the enemy and his plans, to expose what he's trying to do within the body of Christ, to expose, you know, what's going on. And I feel the Holy Spirit so like heavily right now, um, just because I, I know this is the proper timing. I know this is the proper way. I know this is what he wants me to do. So boom, we going to start off that way. Um, yeah, I do have my list here and it's, it's quite lengthy because there was a lot that happened I was involved with this group for about a year out of my life um so yeah so let's get started um let's go ahead and pray yeah we'll pray thank you Lord for this story time thank you for this video thank you for this YouTube channel I thank you for the people who you brought to this channel to be able to um, hear from you to be able to receive everything that it is that you want them to receive from this video Lord God help them not to um, Come with a judgmental heart or come with a heart hesitant to hear you and your spirit and what you're trying to speak to them Lord God come let them come with a soft and open heart to be ready to receive anything any roots that you need to uproot anything that you need to cut down out of their hearts even if they are involved in a cult or even even if they are um, being manipulated by leadership father I ask that you would just rest this on their spirit and let this not be a harsh judgment to them but let this be an awakening in their spirit lord god to be able to seek you for the truth to be able to seek you for true and divine freedom and so we thank you um that i am your vessel today and i ask that you just send this out into the webs <laughs> into the website and into youtube and to whoever needs to hear it in jesus name and let me use your words and not mine in jesus name okay <sighs> let's get into it I was involved in this group um, for about a year out of my life, okay? Um, for the sake of privacy, for the sake of these specific people not being bashed, I am going to use different um, names for them, okay? So um, I will tell you there's names as I tell the story, but I wanna, I wanna tell the background to the story. So the background is, um, I was just coming out of studying new age okay i was just coming out of the spiritual encounter and if you if you've been following me or if you have seen any of my videos 
It is, I believe the first video I posted here. Um, I'm in an orange top and I'm talking about how um, I had this spiritual encounter with the Lord and how I was delivered from new age. And it's so crazy because when I look back on those videos, I just look at my appearance and how much the Lord has done just in the physical, <laughs> in the physical appearance, I can see God's glory. I can see God's glory in, in, in the changes in my life, but that's neither here nor there. So if you go back to that video, you can hear about my testimony about how the Lord de delivered me from new age and helped me to see that that was demonic and that, um, there were things that were not aligned with him. Okay. So this is right after that. I won't say it's like directly after that, like a week later, but I would say that's the period of my life that I was in. I was coming out of that. I was being delivered from that. Okay. So with that, if you're, if you're coming from a place of studying new age, if you're coming from a place of being deceived in that way, spiritually, when you come into knowing Christ, you really need divine and proper leadership. You really need to be around the, the appropriate community because if not, you're vulnerable, you're open because you know that that wasn't the truth, but you don't quite know what the truth truth is. So you're still seeking. You're still in this place of like, well, I know that wasn't God. I know that that's not the route I'm supposed to go, but what route am I supposed to go? You know what I'm saying? I understand Christianity to an extent, but what does it really, who is God for real? Who's Jesus for real? You know? So that is the place that I was in. So I thought that I knew God, you know, I would do your ordinary, you know, read your word and, and pray and things like that. But I was still living for the world for sure. Like I was still doing my thing. I was still, and it wasn't like um, the Christian life where you struggle a little bit. It was like, I'm still in the world, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, so moving on, um, okay. So I am an influencer. I am um, an influencer on social media, on Instagram mainly, okay? So how this started was, I'm gonna use the first person's name. So the first person I'm going to call is Layla. Her name is Layla, let's call her that, okay? So I knew Layla from high school. We had, we weren't friends, but we, you know, we knew each other in high school, whatever. We saw, followed each other on social media. And so she reached out to me and she was like, hey, Delon, like I see you're doing so well on social media. Me and my fiance, which his name is going to be Larry. So she's like, me and my fiance started this gym, you know, and um, we are trying to bring more members into the gym. It's new, it's um, a training center, you know what I'm saying? And we're trying to bring more people in and we just wanna connect with you and we'll offer you free training and free personal, um, personal training for your fitness goals, if you can bring more people in, if you can post about us, if you can promote us right on your page. So I'm like, okay, cool, yes, this is perfect. This is right when I was starting my fitness journey. So I'm like, yeah, definitely. So meet up with her, vibes were good. It was nice, we caught up on things. We met for coffee, talked about the whole agreement and it was perfect. So I start training with them and I start losing weight. I'm doing well. I'm bringing people to the gym. Like y'all said, like I'm, we're on it. This is a great partnership. So um, I start to build a friendship with Larry because he was the main one who I was in contact with because she wasn't there. Layla wasn't there all the time. Um, Larry was, Larry was my actual personal trainer. So he was the main one who I would see every time I would train. I, would, I was training like four times out of the week. So I would, see, I would see him constantly. So I would say maybe a month into training, Larry has this spiritual encounter, okay? And I only know that he had this encounter because he came into the gym talking about it. And he was like, you know, I found God. And um, the encounter that he talked about was, I can't remember the exact details. I do remember that he saw some visions of some things and he would he he feels like he was delivered from a demon at that time and there were some there was a lot that went on that night prior. And so he came into the gym like, you know, I'm a free man. I'm I'm following the Lord. This is what's going on or whatever. And so I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I'm a Christian too. So yeah, that's dope, you know. And so we connected on that. And so we talked a lot about God just in the coming days and the coming weeks, you know? And so I noticed that things started changing. So I knew that he um, would play like, you know, worldly music and like music with cussing in and stuff like that at the gym while we worked out. And he started playing gospel music while we would work out. And he would, you know, 
talk about God a lot and just, I just saw a gradual change. Like, okay, this guy is really like on a new journey. You could tell, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember everything. So yeah. So he's on this new journey or whatever. And then he starts having Bible studies, right? So he starts having Bible studies after each gym session. And so he's like, Delon, do you want to stay for the Bible studies? And all you have to do is pull up a chair. You know what I'm saying? You're already here. So why don't you just pull up a chair? Listen, you know, if they're going to be short, like five to 10 minutes, and we're just going to talk about the word, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. What I want you guys to know is the demeanor of Larry is extremely dominant. Okay. Um, and when I say dominant, I mean... You can tell he's a natural leader, but he kind of exerts his dominance with a condescending tone and with kind of like a know-it-all, you know. So even when it came to personal training, it was like he exerted his dominance. You know what I mean? It's like, I know you're tired, but you're going to do this because we got, you know what I mean? I told you five more, so let's go, you know, and it's, it's like that, that works well with a trainer, but not so much with someone who's trying to lead you to Christ. You see what I'm saying? So I felt like I really didn't have a choice <laughs> when it came to the Bible studies, you know, because it wasn't like, if you'd like to join, you know, if you just want to stay, it was more like we do a Bible study. So, you know, you might, you're already here. You might as well stay, you know? And so it was like, okay, yeah, sure. So I stayed for the Bible studies and, um, they were cool. They were good. They were, he would maybe pick a verse of the day from the Bible app and expound upon it, talk more about it. And what I noticed was that he was very knowledgeable. He was very knowledgeable about the word y'all. And he broke it down. I could tell that he actually had a spiritual gift to teach because I have a spiritual gift to teach. So the way that he broke it down, I understood it. And yeah, you know, it, it was like, it wasn't like it, it hit me like, uh-uh, something ain't right. It was, he know what he's talking about, you know? And so after each session, after each session of working out, I will go and stay for the Bible studies, all that. So we grew together on that. And then we started doing personal Bible studies, okay? So he would call me and just be like, hey, you got time? Do you want to read the word? You want to study the word? And again, not that I didn't want to. It was just like, I didn't really feel like I had a choice for real. You know what I'm saying? It was like, you know, it was just, he, he would hit me with that tone, like, oh, you can't right now, you know, so what, what, you, you busy right now? And it's like, no, I'm not busy. I just don't really want to do that. But I was also like, you know, I do need to build my relationship with God, whatever. So let me get on the phone. <laughs> so he would call me daily, daily. I'm already seeing him at the gym, but you calling me throughout the day too, to talk about the word and, you know, read scripture and stuff like that. So um, we would go through a chapter a day and he kind of broke down what he was going to do with me. Like, um, you know, in your spiritual journey, I can see that you're growing and I just want to help you. I just want, he will always use words like, I, I, I love your soul. I love your soul. And I don't want your soul to go to hell. I, I love you and I want to see you grow. And so we're going to study together. Mind you, I just told y'all this man just got saved, you know? So he immediately went from like, his, hold on, I gotta charge my phone a little bit. Make sure this is charging. Okay. So he immediately went from, you know, I just found the Lord to now I'm leading others, you know? And it, it I don't know. I don't know. I, I still didn't see it like that at the beginning. But now I see it like that, like, bruh, did you, you, you can, you feel like you have the capacity to lead me. But anyway, so he was like, we're going to go from, we're going to read the gospels first. We're going to start, you know, John, and then we're going to go on. Da, da, da. So, um, we started reading a chapter a day. And if we didn't get through a full chapter, we would do half a chapter a day. He would call me. We would go through, do you know what that scripture means? Uh, it means this. No, this is what the Lord is saying right there. He's saying this. He's saying that. Do you know what this part means? Okay, keep reading. You know, it's like, why are you like 
coming off like straight teachery, like not like we're studying together. It's like you're teaching me something that only you know. You know what I'm saying? So I began to like kind of revere him in that way. Like, oh, you know what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? And that is not uncommon for Christians who are immature in the faith. And when I say immature, it's not in a negative way, but beginners. You know what I'm saying? Or just coming into the faith or not, not as mature as someone who has been walking with the Lord for a while. It's not uncommon for us to... Uh, revere someone who is m more mature in the faith it's not uncommon for us to look towards somebody like oh you know what you're talking about you know what I mean and to honor that or to you know feel like that's admirable that's not uncommon however you weren't that mature in the faith <laughs> so you exerting dominance as far as like us reading and all that it was like why did you feel like you had to do that, Larry? Larry. <laughs> okay, so anyway. So we would read together, all of that. And this one particular day, okay, this one particular day, let me get my notes. I was at the gym. I was working out, got done working out. I'm sitting down, I'm tired, I'm sweaty. I'm like, whew. And he comes up to me and he's like, you wanna go on a mission? I was like, a mission, what you mean? And he was like, do you want to go on a mission? And I'm like, again, asserting dominance. So you're not giving me any details about what you're talking about. You're kind of making me and forcing me to say, okay, yeah. You know what I mean? To get the details of what you're saying. He just kept, do you want to go on a mission? And I'm like, okay, yeah, what's up? What mission? And so he's like, I have this girl. Okay, I'm going to call her Jenny. He's like, I have this girl, Jenny. Um... I've been knowing her for a while and I feel like you've seen her come into the gym and I knew exactly who he was talking about, right? Because this girl used to come into the gym and I always felt like the energy was off. Like every time I seen her, she was either in Ugg boots or bringing him something to eat or something else. But mind you, he got, uh, he has Layla as his, as his fiance, right? He got Layla as his fiance. So I'm like, why does Jenny keep coming in here? You know, it just it just didn't sit right with me. But I never said anything because that was my business. So he brings her up. He's like, yeah, I think you met her before. She comes to the gym sometimes. But, you know, I want to go out to her house and I want to take you out there with me. And as we're driving there, I'll, you know, discuss and let you know what's going on. And so I'm like, okay, sure. So I'm driving. He didn't have a car. I'm driving to Jenny's house, which is far out so we it was like a 35 minute drive which is now living in houston i'm like that ain't nothing but from where i'm from that was a minute so we're driving and he's just telling me like so i've known jenny for a while um we're together and <laughs> it's so crazy we're together and she needs deliverance she is dealing with a demonic spirit um it has been depressing her causing her anxiety she's been oppressed by it and i'm bringing you because i want you to see and i want us to pray for her and to talk with her and she recently feels like she received the holy spirit she recently feels like she has the gift of tongues but she is talking in tongues uncontrollably she is speaking in tongues uncontrollably and she'll be trying to speak English with me on the phone or in, in person and then these tongues will come up. So I want you to go with me to, to pray for her. So I'm like, back up, back up. Because <laughs> this is a lot. Number one, what you mean y'all together? <laughs> Let's start there. What you mean y'all together? Because last I knew you were Layla. And... He was just, okay, so his reasoning for that, y'all, this is, this is his, re. okay, I'll tell you his reasoning and then I'll tell you how this ties into manipulation, okay? So his reasoning was that because God sees sex as the consummation of marriage or sex as the tying of marriage, um, because God sees it that way spiritually, that the last person he had sex with before he came to Christ is his wife. 
This is Larry's reasoning. This is what Larry is telling me from the passenger seat. And so he's telling me, you know, that's what the Lord has given me peace about is that I can't leave Layla because that's technically my fiance. And I can't leave Jenny because that would be like divorce in the spirit. So both of them, I'm with both of them. And so I was like, well, are you sexually active with both of them? I'm not sexually active at all. I'm not sexually active at all. Like I really haven't even been wanting it. So I don't even, so the answer is yes. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, uh, when you do want it, you're getting it from one of them, right? So anyway, I was trying to take all that in, you know, but I was like, I'm not one to judge if that's what the Lord said to you. And then again, the spiritual backing you got you got him coming up with scripture to tell me why this is why this is accurate. You got his condescending tone to tell me why this is accurate. You got me really not knowing too much about any of this. You know what I mean? So I didn't buck up like that ain't right. And the Lord said this. I didn't know what to say back to that. So I'm just like, okay, cool. So Jenny got a demon. So he's like, um, you know. Jenny needs deliverance. She has been struggling with this demon, whatever. And then the whole speaking in tongues thing. At this point, I had been filled with the Holy Spirit. I had I, I had the Holy Spirit when I was a child. However, and I had been speaking in tongues. However, I knew that I can control. It's a, so speaking in tongues, that's a heavenly language. That's something that just like I'm talking to you in English, I can go into tongues and speak to the Lord. So when it's done uncontrollably and he's telling me like, she'll talk to me regular and then just go into tongues and she can't control it. I'm like, that don't happen for real. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're not in the presence of the Holy Spirit, you just straight up, you know, it was weird. I don't know. And so he's like, well, anyway, we need to go to her house and see what's up. We need to pray for her. So I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. So we go to her house, we go up there she opens the door and her eyes are bloodshot red. Like she'd been crying so hard. I mean, swollen, red, crying. So I'm like, hey. And she's like, hey, oh, Larry, I didn't know you were bringing anybody. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm cool. I'll just sit and wait for y'all to get to, get it together. So she t he's like, hold on, Delon. I'm going to go to the room with her. Takes her in the room. They was in the room for an hour. An hour. So at this point, I'm laying down on the carpet. I'm asleep. Because I haven't been to the gym. I woke up early on it. Like, this is morning time workout. So I'm asleep. And they come back out. You know, she's sniffling, getting herself together. I don't know what they did in there. I don't I don't think it was anything, you know, inappropriate. But I think he was just talking to her or getting her together or something. I don't know what was going on. So they come out. And he's like, um, Dawn, you want to have a Bible study? I'm like, okay. So we sit down and we're doing this Bible study. First of all, you didn't already told me that this girl has a demon in her. So I'm already like, you know, looking at her from <laughs> my side eye like. And he is teaching, but he got, he's sitting back. He got his foot up, rested on his, you know, crossed his legs. And he's real nonchalant and cool. And it was just so much pride. I felt the spirit of pride so heavily on him. And he's just like, yeah, so, you know. And so, yeah, and in 1 Corinthians, it says, you know, love is da-da-da-da. So what does that mean? That means we have to love and we have to da-da-da-da. So if the Lord says this and da-da-da. So she's taking notes. She got her notebook out. And she's like, mm-hmm. And I'm just like... My spirit ain't sitting right with none of this. I feel like this is a show. <laughs> I feel like I, I can't follow what's going on because I don't know what you're talking about, number one, Larry. You just saying stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's not it's not given Bible study because nobody is included. It's you preaching to us about whatever you want to say about the scripture. And Jenny, why are you taking notes? Why are you taking, why do you have a, 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 it was giving, it was giving, I'm showing this man that I am so invested in what he's saying. 
That's the energy that was coming off of this. I'm so invested in what you're saying. Yes, I'm writing this down. It wasn't like we're all talking about the word. No. So I'm sitting there, right? And he's just going on and on and on and on. So he says, Delon, is there anything that you want to say to Jenny? Is there anything that you want to, um, you know, tell her? And I told her what was on my spirit about the whole, like, stop writing stuff down. Listen to what he's saying. If you're going to listen or participate, don't just take whatever he's saying and shovel it down into your spirit like it's the truth. I didn't say it like that. But I was just like, hey, Jenny, so... um so I see that you're like writing things down and that's great. It's always great to take notes. It's always great to journal things. But I feel like, you know, if you want to engage or if you have any questions or if you like really want to kind of go deeper in the word, like I feel like this is a good time to ask questions or whatever. Y'all, when I say that demon manifested, that demon manifested. And so she's looking at me and she says, hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Delon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling this spirit manifesting, right? So I'm looking at her like, oh, that's a demon, you know? And for, <laughs> and I and I want to say this because I know there's gonna be some people who are watching this who are not Christian or who don't understand spiritual things or who do not understand uh, demonic oppression. There's going to be a lot of people who are watching this who don't understand that, okay? But for those who do know, who who do have uh, 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 the Holy Spirit that gives you the unction, like, that's a demon. Like, you can be able to point it out. You know what I mean? You know? That's how I am. So I knew. And so, um, and so it scared me. It scared me so bad. And so I was like, so I was like, yeah, that's, that's all I had to say. And so I started looking down, y'all. They start talking again. She puts her she puts her journal down. She was like, starts listening to Larry again. He's teach. He goes back into his spiel. Yeah. So you know, Lord is da da da, and you know, he appointed this people, and then I'm like, y'all. I was so fearful because I felt this demon right here. Like she, we're sitting right, we're night right next to each other, but I felt this demon so strongly that was like, I felt it, and so I'm like. So I start crying. Tears is coming down. I'm quiet. I'm just like, nobody noticed. Nobody noticed because y'all's spirit is all entangled with one another. And you're infatuated with one another. And y'all already doing something y'all ain't got no business. Because this man is dang near married. So what's going on anyway? But I didn't say none of that. So I'm just like... You know, so I start crying. I'm like, whoo. So I'm feeling uneasy. I'm like, let's go. Why are we even here? So he's like, after he gets done with his whole hour long, that's the thing. Like he's long winded and he's long winded because he's trying to prove that he's knowledgeable about the word. So he gets done with his hour long Bible study. Mind you, I didn't even, I'm, I remember I worked out. I'm in gym clothes. I'm ready to go home. So he's like, um, Delon, you want to pray? Let's pray, uh, over, um jenny let's pray over jenny he has jenny sit in the chair and we all hold hands so we holding hands y'all and he starts praying and this is the one time i can count on my hand how many times we prayed let me start there this is the one time okay because we did not pray often so he starts praying, Lord, if there's any spirits in here that, you know, are not like you, we, we bring fire on them in the name of Jesus. So she's sitting in the chair and she goes, so I'm praying. I'm like, I'm looking down at her in the chair like, I said, them ain't tongues. That's not, that's not the Holy Spirit tongues. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that ain't tongues. So she's going and going and I'm like, whew, I'm feeling so uneasy. And, and again, this is like the beginning of my spiritual journey. This is the beginning of my Christian journey and the beginning of me understanding my spiritual gifts. So I didn't know what to do. Now, if I say something like that, it's it's getting casted out because I know what you is. But I didn't know. 
So she's doing all this and he's like, um, yeah, he's still praying, fire, come down, fire, come down. So he gets done or whatever and she lets go of my hands and she said, oh, girl, you got power in your hands. I feel fire from your hands. And I was like, oh my God, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. So I, uh, he was like, Delon, can you grab my iPad out the, out the car? And I was like, nah. So I run out, <laughs> run out, go to the car. And he comes running out after me. And I was speaking in tongues in the car because I was talking to God and I was praying and I was like, God, what's going on? What is this? And so I'm speaking in tongues and he opens up the door and frightens me, literally. And I'm like, whoo. And I remember him saying, I never heard you speak in tongues before. And I don't know why that sticks out to me so much, but it's also like, that's because you probably did think that whatever tongue she was speaking in was, was from the Lord, you know, but those were demonic tongues that she was speaking in so he was he came and he sat down and I told him what thus saith the Lord right then I was like so the Lord is saying you gotta stop bro you gotta stop having sex with her like you you cannot be involved with her intimately like you can't because she because she's carrying that spirit demons transfer I got the spirit of God in me but I got the spirit of God in me so how is a demon gonna transfer on me if I got God like that don't even make sense, Delon. Like that's what I'm saying. Like I'm I'm so I'm so filled with the Lord. Like they're, they're, can't, that demon can't do nothing to me. So I'm like, okay, all right. Again, that dominance, that that loud tone, that condescending tone, that that pride, that spirit of pride that came with him. It was like I couldn't combat that. I couldn't go back and forth with him. So I was just like, okay, okay. I feel you. I hear you. And so he's like, well, the reason I told you to come get my iPad is because I've been writing down what she says. So he can interpret the demonic tongues that she's speaking, right? He's been writing down what he's been hearing her say, okay? Um, and the tongues that he's been hearing her say, <laughs> all of this is so crazy. I'm sorry, pause. All of this is so crazy to even talk about because when I'm talking about it, it just seems like, duh, you should have known. Okay. So it was like, duh, you should have known that you shouldn't have been in relationship or cahoots with them because you, you see already, but I didn't know this at the time, right? So when he read me what was on her iPad, on, on his iPad about what she had said, it was demonic and it rhymed. It was almost like poetry and it was like, these demons were talking to God and that's how like that's how it looked like that's what it I don't know it was something like oh father this one is desolate why would you allow her burdens to be I don't know y'all but I was so freaked out and I was like what is this what is this and why are you writing this stuff down why are you remembering this stuff like what are you trying to decode it like Stop messing with her, period. That's all it boils down to. So that was the first encounter of Jenny for me, okay? So from then on, I was like, you know, Jenny can stay over there, honestly. Like, I didn't feel like I needed to be close to her. And I felt like it was messed up that she was even with Larry or they were together because I was like, what about Layla? And Layla and Larry had a child together. They had a child. So I was like, mm, mm Okay, so let's move on. Um, let's move on. There's a word of repentance right now. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes to make sure I'm staying on track with things because it was a lot. Okay. Okay. So shortly after this, I'm still doing the sessions. I'm still doing my uh, personal training sessions and all of that. Um, then he comes to me like, I'm trying to start a ministry group. Would you like to be a part of this ministry group? And I'm like, what all, you know, is in the ministry group? What does it entail? You know, we'll just do Bible studies with each other for now. And then we can add more people and we'll just do, you know, Bible studies, whatever. So on every Sunday, he would do this online preaching basically he would have a sermon 
online and he would want me to create the little you know how like it was on facebook so you know how like if you're watching a facebook live video you can see whatever backdrop they put on there you see what i'm saying so he would have me put the scriptures up that was my job i would put the scriptures up and create them on canva so that each one could come up so as he's speaking about whatever is on there it's, it's already on there right his sermons so he would do this throughout the week you know he would do this on tuesdays and i think on sunday so he would send me all the scriptures like can you put this on a, on a on a slide can you put this on a slide or and, I, and so it, it was becoming like my job you know and so it was like my responsibility and i would feel i i didn't miss that responsibility because he again with the condense condescending tone and the manipulation he would make me feel like you got to do this you know what i'm saying this is for the lord so why wouldn't you help do this so who child um yeah so we would do those we would do group house meetings so he lived with layla and jenny would come over i saw the dynamic between layla and jenny and it was given sister wives it was giving we honor and obey our husband um we do what he wants us to do and that's just what it was you know they they were obligated to get along and hang with each other because he was with both of them he was with both of them so when the ministry group started it was me jenny layla and larry that was it so we would go over to their house and we would have a bible study session they would often cook and we would listen to larry tell us whatever about the word and so I started to kind of idolize Larry because it's like, dang, he's so knowledgeable about the word of God. Like he's so close to God. And um, I would have prophetic dreams, which that's a gift. If you have prophetic dreams, that's that's a gift that can be cultivated. And you just need to be under the proper leadership to tell you how to interpret those or what you need to do with those or, you know. And so I was having these dreams and having no spiritual guidance or leadership to help me understand what I was doing and so I would always go to Larry about these I would always go to oh I had another dream this is what that dream means this is what that dream means oh yeah God is trying to tell you this God is trying to tell you that and it would never sit right with me it would never the interpretation of the dreams that he would give me would never sit right it was like mm, they don't really sound right like it's not giving confirmation but okay if that's what you're saying it's, it's about it's got to be that you know because you you hear from god so it just became very obsessive again we're having our daily bible calls so he would expect that i have read the chapters that he told me to read i was having the daily bible calls we we're having the weekly get togethers at the house we were having the the um personal training session so i was already seeing you multiple times a week we would have the bible studies after the gym session so i was seeing you then i was creating the slides for the ministry group so i'm talking to you then like my life was becoming consumed with this ministry group so as we got deeper i started noticing some things okay so i made a little list on here of what i started noticing okay so i noticed that we never prayed we never prayed we never got together in our in our group meetings and said okay let's pray first before we do our bible study we just got to okay let's turn to chapter such and such and th the reason why that's so important is because you need god you need the holy spirit to come into the room and give you the proper um interpretation of the scripture otherwise scripture can be misinterpreted so we never pray we never invited the holy spirit in to even help us like uh only time we prayed was over the food man let it be good for the nourishment of our bodies that's the only time i remember okay um no one was filled with the holy spirit and no one was holy spirit led again going back to we never prayed no one went to church i remember i asked him about that what do you think about like going to church and you know why don't we go to church you just can't trust pastors nowadays you can't trust everybody's leadership and i you know god speaks to me directly 
he will always say stuff like that. Like God speaks to me directly. And so why do I need to be uh, listening to somebody who is going to tell me the wrong thing? Like, you know, uh, no leadership. So it's like we were under his leadership. You know what I'm saying? We listen to everything you say and we're taking everything. Like we would be studying what you're saying and trying to kind of prove to him. Like even on the daily calls, I found myself trying to prove to him that I remembered what he taught me about a, a certain scripture. I remember what he showed me about something. And you know, that's very good. Yep. Yep. That's the right. That's right. That's the truth. That's the truth. I'm sorry. I'm getting mad thinking about it. But he had no leadership. So it's like, if you're our leader, if we're following everything that you're saying, who is correcting you? Who's making sure that you are being led the right way? He would always say, you know, God is my leader. Jesus is my, I listen to Jesus. I just, it's, it's right there in the word of God. I just listen to what Jesus said, man. Um, no men in the ministry group, right? So we started bringing more people in, Okay. The way that this happened is we started recruiting people, okay? He would have a list of how many people we brought in. So he would have this like, Delon, Jenny, Layla, y'all all have to bring in five people this week into our calls, our Bible study calls. So I will be on social media posting constantly about this. Join us on our Bible study. Join us on Bible study. Y'all know how many people, it's probably some of y'all watching that ended up in them Bible study calls. So I would um, get people to, you know, read with us. And again, it's not to say that we were doing anything bad. We were reading the word of God. But the thing was, there was an ideology that was coming specifically from Larry. There was a, an interpretation that was coming from Larry. This was not a group Bible study. This was Larry leading them. All of them. Every call. He was the one. And so with that, it's like, so you, you're you having everybody revere you. You're like, you are our pastor, basically. That's how it's coming off. But even a good leader and a good pastor can see the gifts in his sheet, can see the gifts in the people that he's leading and cultivate that. You don't give any space to cultivate anybody's spiritual gifts because they make you feel inferior because you don't have the Holy Spirit anyway. That was a bar. So... Um, he would have us recruit others and make it mandatory to bring people in. Um, he would call others wicked when they had different opinions. That was his favorite word was wicked. Like, nah, that's just wickedness. That's just wickedness right there. Like, you know, if they don't want to come, he would say family of light. He would call us the family of life. He, they don't want to come to the family of light. You know what I'm saying? We know the Lord. We know like, why wouldn't you want to be drawn to something who's somebody who's doing something right? Somebody who's living for the Lord. Like if you find fault in that, if you find that there's people who don't want to join, who people who don't want to read with us, like why wouldn't you want to read the word of God? That's wickedness. That's a spirit that they're dealing with that God needs to deliver them from. So when you hear that over and over and over again, and you're constantly around someone who is planting that in your head and who has stripped you away from your own identity. Again, I was with him seven days out the week. So when you're with someone like that and they are stripping away your own personal identity, I remember I stopped wearing makeup. Cause he was like, you know, you don't need to get your nails done. You don't need to wear makeup and stuff like that. Like, I'm going to read you a matter of fact, I'm going to read you a scripture about what the Lord said, because there's a scripture in the Bible about like a prostitute and how she dresses and how she does her makeup and how she tries to lure men in and stuff like that. And she wears gold jewelry. And you see you reading that, Delon? That's what I'm saying. You don't need to have on that stuff because it's, 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 God calls it a Jezebel spirit. So I'm feeling like I got a Jezebel spirit because I like to do a cup crease. So that's what I mean by he will manipulate me in by, by using the scripture, right? So why did I say that? Where was I going for that? Yeah, calling people wicked. So my friends and family members who I tried to get into this group, they could see it right off bat, especially men. He was always trying to get, if, if he would always say like, if you get a, a girl into the group, try to get her boyfriend, try to get her husband, try to get the couples into the group. That's what he would say all the time. Like try to make sure they come in as a couple because you can't lead one person and the other person not being led. You know what I'm saying? You need to have them both being led by God, da, da, da. So anytime I would try to get a guy into the group, they almost immediately would be like, nah, 
I don't rock with him. Something off about him. I don't know about that. He's coming off like this. Or, you know, why is he coming off so demanding? And I don't like his tone. And I was like, no, that's just how he is. Like, God told him this. And God is, God speaks to him. Can't you see that God speaks to him? Like, mm-hmm. So I was slowly being so manipulated that I couldn't even see it. And I stopped talking to specific family members or specific friends because Larry deemed them as wicked, okay? So I would try to get people in the ministry group and they would say stuff like, you know, I, I can or, you know, I don't have time to read today. Okay, so you don't have time for the Lord. Okay, got you. Gaslighting them gaslighting them because that is what I learned from Larry so I started to ostracize myself so now it really did feel like I only had this family this ministry group because everybody else I was cutting them off left and right I was like if you don't want to be in the group you cut off because we are the chosen people at the end of the day we know what we talking about like we we're we're doing this for the Lord 24 7 so if you ain't living like that you obviously got some other agendas like you, you you're not really trying to live for the Lord so you can you ain't got no space in my life so I started cutting people off left and right left and right so um yeah always felt pride anger and dominance and narcissism really now I know that it was narcissism too but the spirit of pride the spirit of pride likes to use manipulation tactics. The spirit of pride likes to use uh, rage and anger kind of go with the spirit of pride, right? So when he was operating, he was operating so heavily in that spirit. It's like, again, I felt that I had no choice in the matter with things. Or even if we had a discussion about my opinion on something, how you feel about this? Well, I feel like, you know, this is okay. Or, you know, the Lord says that we can, you know, do this or do that. Nah, nah, that's not love. Nah, let, let me go to it. Let me you, read this right here. Read that out loud. The Lord says da, 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 da. So what does that mean, Delon? That means it's not okay. That means you can't do that. That means da, 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 da. Like that. Like that's how he was coming off. And so it was like, okay, you know, I began to form my ideologies about God and about who I was based off of what Larry was saying based off of what Larry believed. And so um, it got bad. It got real, real bad. And really it got demonic because that's the thing. So let's talk about what the tactic of the enemy is, is for this. So number one, if you're in the world and you are living how, according to your flesh, you're living according to self, you're not under the leadership of the Holy Spirit or God or Jesus or in Christianity. Like you don't care. You just, you're doing your thing. The enemy doesn't have to try as hard with you. Okay. Because you are already kind of out the way, you know, you, you're, you're, you're already kind of deceived. So he doesn't have to try as hard. So if you are a Christian, you going hard for the Lord. You know who you are. Holy Spirit led, filled, doing your thing, living for the Lord in the, in the army of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? A mature Christian who knows the truth. He's fearful of you. Okay? So he's not going to try to mess with you like that. You know what I'm saying? Like the ones who he wants are the ones right in the middle. That's the ones who, who he is going to come after the hardest because... The ones on this side, he can't get you. The ones on this side, he already got you. The ones right in in the middle, he has a chance to kind of dibble and dabble so that he can put you on the side of, I got you, okay? Especially if you have spiritual gifting, if you have a purpose, a call, if you are, you know, called to do something specific in the kingdom of God, he's going to try to make sure to manipulate that purpose while you're in this little lukewarm stage, okay? And so that's where I was. And so um, when it came to spiritual gifting and all of that, again, I was being demonically deceived, right? So yeah, um, let me see what else I can add to this. I ain't even gonna talk about that. Just, it's so much y'all, it's so much. Okay. So let's wrap this up a little bit. Let's talk about how I was delivered from this. So um, I got into a relationship, not even a relationship, a situationship. And if you got my book, 
y'all i think it's like chapter 10 <laughs> maybe chapter 9 but it's such a good chapter and it is such an interesting piece of my life and um some of you have already seen my other testimony videos about that relationship and all that ended up having a miscarriage in it um ended up really being deceived like heavily in that in that relationship and he was demonically influenced too so after that relationship is when I found God I was still part of the ministry group but definitely not like I was before because I distanced myself once I became pregnant because I was now under the leadership or authority of this new man you know what I'm saying of this man who was leading me in whatever direction and I was so like engulfed with that relationship that I was just like I don't have time for the ministry group like I, I just got time to be on him so um after I stopped that, I finally like got to the my breaking point where I was like, Lord, I just want to know you. <laughs> I just want to know you. I just want to know who you are for real. Like I'm tired of being manipulated. I'm tired of being deceived. I'm tired of thinking that I know you and I don't. Even when I was studying New Age, it's like I'm, I've been seeking you, bro. Like where are you at? You know? And so I went to School of Reform, which is another video in my in my log i went to this uh it's a conference it's called school reform and i was baptized i was set free from demonic entities i um received the holy spirit for real for real for real for real like a refreshing it was a refreshing and um i was on fire i was on fire y'all so when i came back from that little retreat I was on fire. I mean, I can't even explain that. That time period of my life was just like, God, 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 God. And not in a religious way like it was with, with the ministry group. Because it was definitely like a religious, traditionalistic, like, this is what we do every day. But ain't nobody getting closer to God. You're getting closer to Larry. But this period was like, the Holy Spirit was just downloading so much and giving me so much. And this was... Uh, when he confirmed to me that I would be moving to Houston and all this stuff. And so I remember telling Larry, like, you know, I feel like the Lord is telling me that I'm moving to Houston. And immediately he was like, I don't know about that. You know, it's a lot of demonic stuff in Houston. It's a lot of stuff that goes on. And, uh, you know, you just want to make sure that the Lord is telling you. Sometimes it's our own desires, Delon. Sometimes it's our own heart and the things that we want. And we want stuff so bad that we'll say that God told us, like, he was trying to manipulate me out of my purpose. So, um, yeah. So anyway, the Lord brought new friends into my life and they were the friends who, uh, invited me to school of reform, brought new friends into my life and I spent more time with them and I would do Bible studies with them. And I saw the difference, like, hold on, like the Holy Spirit is here in this Bible study. Like I'm learning for real. Like I'm growing for real. Like this is not, it, it just felt so different than the Bible studies with Larry. And so, um, as I kept spending more time with these new, this new group of friends, I tried to get them into the ministry group, you know, cause I was still tied to the ministry group, still felt like I had a responsibility there and all that. And so I tried to get them to join and they were like, mm, nah, they sensed it. They knew Holy Spirit told them and they discerned that that wasn't about the right. And so they didn't tell me until later on right and um uh, found out later that they had had a whole discussion about it like she's in a cult bro like <laughs> but you can't just bring that to somebody who's in a cult at the time because they won't receive it it has to be like the holy spirit has to let them know first and then you'll receive confirmation from others like because it's it's such a it's a touchy thing you know what I'm, you know what i'm saying because you feel like you're doing the right thing you feel like you have devotion towards the right thing so when somebody tells you you've been doing this all wrong or this is demonic you're gonna be like demonic what how we study the word you know so they waited until you know the holy spirit had released me to be able to uh really see and understand what i was a part of and so they were like yeah we were waiting you know we were waiting for you to see you know what's really going on we've been praying for you all of that and so I remember the day that I told Larry that I was completely leaving the group. I was so fearful. I was so scared. I was with one of my friends from my new group of friends. I was with her that day and she was like, it's okay, Delon. It is okay. Like, you're going to be fine. I was like, I just can't, I just can't tell him that I'm leaving. Like that fear tactic, that manipulation, it was all over me. Like, I can't tell him. 
she's like, it's okay. You can tell him that you're leaving the group. So I ended up texting him and he gaslighted the heck out of me, y'all. He was like, I knew this was coming. The Lord had already told me that this was coming. So this is divine. I'm glad that this is happening and I wish you nothing but the best on your new journey. I know where my spirit is and I know where my family of light is. I know where we're headed. I hope that you make the best decisions for you. I knew this was coming. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Um... One of my friends actually ended up having a dream about him and she has prophetic dreams, right? She didn't even, she never met him, never had seen him, only heard about him. She had a dream about him and the Lord was telling her in the dream that he's dealing with the spirit of pride, right? And there was this demonic entity in her dream that was saying, they listen to me, they hear me and they listen to me. Everything that I say, they listen to me. And it was the spirit of pride, like, in him saying, whatever I say, they gonna listen, you know? And so she, when she told me that, I was like, bruh, everything is like full circle, it's making sense. And so um, it took me a while to really like release that connection because I was still studying his page and I was still, not, not like listening to what he was saying, but just now that I knew the truth, I was like trying to see how far into deceit he really was and the whole two wives situation, like I, I would look up stuff like, you know, is two wives right and all this stuff. Cause I was like, was I really deceived like that? You know what I mean? It's like, you look back and you'd be like, dang, I was really in that. Like I was cutting my own family. I had to reconnect with my own family. Like, I'm sorry y'all that I cut y'all off thinking that y'all was wicked. You wasn't wicked. I was the one, you know, deceived. So, um, it took me a while to get to where I am now, but I am so liberated and I'm so glad and oh that's the last thing I wanted to do I wanted to read some of the signs to let you know whether or not you are a, a part of a cult okay signs you're in a cult number one the leader has the ultimate authority so you're not allowed to criticize he claims supreme knowledge calls himself a prophet messenger or enlightened I forgot to tell y'all. He tried to add a third girl to his wife situation. I remember that. We had, she was actually my friend from school. I was the one who like recruited her into the ministry group and she started reading with us, but then she became like more close and started coming over to the house and would be a part of like the daily Bible studies and weekly things or whatever. And she was married, but she was having difficulty in her marriage and Larry took it upon himself to kind of disciple her. That's what he would call this whole thing is discipleship and discipling others. He tried to disciple her and they would have these 6 a.m. Uh, workout sessions, just them two in a gym. Usually it was multiple people, but it was just them two in the gym. I don't know what went down, but next thing you know, he was like, she came up to him saying that the Lord was telling her that she's supposed to be with him and all this stuff but it was it was a demon it, it was it was the enemy telling her that that's what was supposed to go go on because she was married and he got a fiance and a little thing on the side his second wife why would the lord condone any of this ain't nobody it, come on but anyway he didn't bring that to us until it got to the point where she was like well i'm leaving the ministry group if we're not gonna be together and he was like um well, I was really thinking, you know, could the Lord be saying this? Could this be, you know, somebody that I need to bring into my life? I didn't know. What you mean you don't know? Anyway, signs you're in a cult, okay? This is how I'm gonna end this very long video. Um, group suppresses opinion. So information that contradicts the group is seen as wicked or anti. Okay, so they, they, the group that you're in or the church that you're in is going to have an ideology or a mindset that is like, whatever we believe is different from what they believe and they anti-Christ. You know what I'm saying? They are, they are wicked. They are from the enemy if they ain't in our group. If they don't want to come to this church or if y'all decide to leave this church, decide to leave this group, you from the enemy. A uh, group is paranoid about the outside world and others. Cults uh, position themselves to be the sole refuge for the members. You got to go to this church. You got to be under me. You got to join this leadership. Uh, very aggressive with their recruitment process. 
we were we were very aggressive with the recruitment process he would make sure that we called and followed up and uh did you send her a message and did you make sure and did you ask her again and tell her that we got this going on and if they don't want to join they don't want to join they don't want to read with us they ain't got to read with us and it's the same thing like when you're a part of you know a cult like church if your pastor or your leader or your teacher or whoever is telling you like you need to bring people to join if that is like that ain't right you know what i'm saying like the lord leads people into communities and it's it's okay to invite other people but if there is if you feel like this pressure or this aggression about getting people into this ministry it could be a cult um separation from church no leadership or authority suppresses members individuality and gets them to act or think the same way again i stopped wearing makeup i stopped getting my nails done i started dressing more simplistic because that's what layla and jenny were doing and so i felt like i had to be like them and then just in our in our whole demeanor our ideology our thought process we shut other people out that did not think like us um us versus them mentality so people outside of the group are shunned there's a miss we're misunderstood by the outside world again he would call us the family of light the chosen ones we're the only one that he would say that a lot we're the only ones that have this knowledge like i'm thinking we're the only ones that got this knowledge who why would god choose us out of all these people he didn't create out of the billions of people he didn't create he only chose us in the midwest in this house together at your gym um, let me see, uh, induces feelings of guilt. So control, manipulation, that narcissistic, that gaslighting stuff, uh, members subservience to the group causes them to cut off ties with friends and family. I'm telling y'all, um, it's hard to see sometimes because you're in it and until you get out of it, you can't really see what it is and that's with anything sometimes that's with sin you know you you think that you're cool you're doing your thing until you get out of it and the holy spirit has to reveal to you what it is and shows you like that wasn't it baby that wasn't it so yeah um so that is my story about being involved in a cult oh my gosh yeah i ain't even gonna go into it it's it's so much little details that i'm thinking about that's just like bruh woo but um yes so i want to pray before we leave because i just feel led to so thank you lord for this video thank you for the people who watched thank you for bringing um people to this video that you would like to see this even if they just stumbled upon this video father we know that you are able to plant seeds into their spirit we know that you are the one who waters the seeds and that you are the one who um who grows them spiritually by hearing whatever it is that your vessels want to speak god and so we thank you lord jesus that i am your hands and your feet on this earth that i'm your mouthpiece for this earth and the others that you have in this position father god to speak out against the enemy to speak out against his plans and schemes to speak those things that um are in secret and in hiding and have veils over them father we thank you for the exposing of them and so right now i just come into agreement with your spirit lord jesus to um release your anointing to release release your power to release your strength lord god unto those who may be deceived right now lord jesus we rebuke deception we rebuke confusion we, re we rebuke all of those things that the enemy would try to use uh in, in warfare and combating your people lord jesus so we ask that you just raise that veil lord god in the name of jesus help them to see you in truth help them to see with their spiritual eyes and to discern the spirit of truth father god that is your holy spirit Help them to be released from the shackles that um, that come to enslave them to the enemy's yokes, that come to, to change and manipulate their perception about who you are, about who they are in you, about what the truth is, Lord God. And so I thank you and I bless you. And um, we bless everybody who listens, everybody who has a heart to hear what you're trying to say through this video. In Jesus' name, amen. Love y'all. I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.